Hi, I am Dr. Manar Safwat, a lecturer of medical parasitology. In this lecture, I would like to talk about phylum Acanthokephila, which is called thorny headed worms or spiny headed worms. In this lecture, you are able to learn Acanthokephila. Taxonomy, morphology, life cycle, and the effects of acanthocephalans on their hosts. Let's start with taxonomy. There are four classes for acanthocephalan: class Polyacanthocephala, parasites of fishes; Archaeacanthocephala, parasites of birds and mammals. And intermediate hosts are insects. Belly acanthocephala, parasites of fishes, amphibians, birds, and mammals. Class Acanthocephala, after taxonomy, we will talk about morphology of adult egg larvae. About adult morphology, Acanthocephala morphology reflect extensive adaptation to their parasitic mood of life and enteric habitat. There is a reduction in muscular, nervous, circulatory, and excretory systems, and a complete loss or at least absence of digestive system. The remaining animals seem little more than a pseudocelomate bag of reproductive organ with a spiny hold fast at one end. The worm size range from 0.92 to 2.40 mm up to a meter in length. General body structure. A cancer body consists of an anterior proboscis, neck, and a trunk. The proboscis varies in shape from spherical to cylindrical, depending on species. It is covered by a segment and has a thin muscular wall within which are embedded the roots of hooks. Size, shapes, and numbers of these hooks are important for taxonomic differentiation. The proboscis is filled, fluid filled. Attached to its inner apex is a pair of muscles called proboscis retractor muscles, which extend the lens. Of the proboscis and the neck, and insert in the wall of a muscular sac called the proboscis receptacle. Proboscis receptacle morphology varies somewhat depending on family, but in general, the receptacle consists of one or two layers of muscle fibers attached to the inner wall of the proboscis. When proboscis retractor muscles contract, the proboscis invaginates into its receptacle with hooks completely inside. When the proboscis receptacle contract, it forces the proboscis to evaginate by hydraulic pressure. There is a nerve ganglia called brain or cerebral ganglia located just within the receptacle. The neck, smooth and spined zone between the most posterior proboscis hooks and enfolding of the body wall. In some species, neck retractor muscles attach to these enfolding of the body wall to the inner surface of the trunk. When the proboscis retractor and the neck retractor muscles contract, the entire anterior end is withdrawing into the trunk. The rest of the body posterior to the neck is called the trunk or metazoma. Like proboscis and the neck, it is covered by a tugment and it has muscular internal layers. Many species have simple spines embedded in the trunk wall that maintain close contact with a host's intestinal mucosa. 
the trunk contains the productive system and also functions in absorbing and distributing nutrients from the host's intestinal contents. In living worms, the trunk is bilaterally flattened, usually with numerous transverse wrinkles. This picture, you can see the morphology of a This is the proboscis with hooks and this is the neck and the trunk. Also, this picture showing on the left side the thorny headed worm and on the right side close up image of the anterior end of the worm and the proboscis containing hooks. About the productive system of adult acanthocephala, usually demonstrate some degree of sexual dimorphism in size, with females being larger than males. In both sexes, one or two thin ligament sacs are attached to the posterior end of the proboscis receptacle and extend to near the distal genital bore. Within these sacs are gonads and some accessory organs of the reproductive systems. Let's talk about male reproductive system. Consists of two testes, normally occur in all species. Each one has a vase efference, through which mature spermatozoa, which appear as slender, headless threads, travel to a common vase difference and to a small penis. Several accessory organs also are present, the most obvious of which are the semen glands. They secrete a copulatory semen of tannic protein, which in some species is stored in a semen reservoir until copulation occurs. Another male accessory sex organ is the copulatory bursa, a bill shaped specialization of the distal body wall that is invaginated into the posterior end of the body cavity except during copulation. And about female reproductive system consists of ovarian balls float freely within the ligament sac increasing in size before insemination occurs. The posterior end of the ligament sac is attached to a muscular uterine bell. This organ allows mature eggs to pass through into the uterus and vagina and out the genital bore while returning in mature eggs to the ligament sac. After copulation, the spermatozoa migrate from the vagina through the uterus and uterine bell and into the ligament sac. There, they began fertilizing oocysts of the ovarian bulls. After the first few cleavage, embryos detach from ovarian bulls and float freely in pseudosolomic fluid, exposing underlying oocysts for fertilization. So, several stages of early embryogenesis may be found in a single female. Look at this big chart showing basic morphology of both female and male acanthocephala. For excretory system of acanthocephala, excretion in most species appear to be affected by diffusion through the body wall, and the nervous system is simple. The cerebral ganglia consists of only 54 to 88 cells in the species studied. It lies in the bosbos in the proboscis receptacle. And there is a large multinucleate cell called a support cell, located ventral and slightly anterior to the cerebral ganglia. Their function is unknown, but they may be secretory and they help 
explain a host's inflammatory reaction to the worm's purposes. After adult morphology, let's talk about the egg morphology. As these pictures showing the egg with three with three embryonic envelope and liberated from ovary free in the body cavity. Pseudo Sorry, pseudo hemocele. Morphology of larva. There are three stages of larva. First, second, and third stage. First stage larva called a cancer with rostellar hooks. Second stage larva, a cantilla with proboscis. And third stage larva, which is an infective stage called cystacanth with maturity but not fully sexually mature. After taxonomy and the morphology of adult egg and larva, let's talk about life cycle of a cancer The definitive host is vertebrates and intermediate hosts are robots as beetles and cockroaches. After embryonated egg bath with a stool of vertebrates ingested by arthropods in which liberate first stage larva, a cancer, in their lumen, then penetrate the intestinal wall to body cavity and they become second stage larva, a cancilla, then third stage larva, cystacans, which is in ingested by definitive host. Man accidentally infected by accidental ingestion of infected arthropods containing cystacans, fifth stage. In this big chart, you can see the life cycle of the acanthocephala. Adult worms mature in intestine, egg liberated in feces, then ingested by beetles and cockroaches, then larvae develop in body cavity to be infective sister acanth stage, and lastly, introduction of infective stage by swallowing beetles or cockroaches. Now, we will talk about the effect of acanthocephalans on their hosts. In definitive hosts, the nature of the damage to intestinal mucosa is traumatic, caused by penetration of the proboscis and is compounded by the worm's tendency to release their halt and reattach at another place. Complete perforation of the gut sometimes occur and in mammals. At least, the results are often rapidly fatal. Great pain accompanies this phase. It is suspected that secondary bacterial infection is responsible for localized and generalized peritonitis, hemorrhage, pericarditis, myocarditis, arthritis, and other complications. In view of the invasive nature of acanthocephalans, It is surprising they elect so little inflammatory response in many cases. Host reaction seems mainly a result of the traumatic damage with granulomatous infiltration and sometimes encapsulation around the proboscis. Some species show evidence that antigens are released from the proboscis followed by an intense inflammatory response. About chemotherapy and treatment of cancer little chemotherapy has been developed for cancer Various authors have proposed castor oil, santonin, carbon tetrachloride, and tetrachloroacylene for primates and bugs with varying results. Asbetium has been successfully used in human cases 
a bot is not recommended for children. In children, we can use mebendazole. Mebendazole was used successfully in a 12 months old child. In human, records of Akansukifila are few, no doubt, because of the nature of intermediate and paratonic hosts involved in the parasite's life cycle. And if you people eat such animals as insects, lizards, microcrustaceans, at least without cooking them first. However, human infection with seven different species have been reported. And these are references from text box if you want to have a look. Thank you.